Hi, my name is Chase Schrader and behind me is my 2004 Subaru Forester overlanding build. Over the last four years, we've went ahead and built and tested this, taking this Forester on some pretty epic journeys. Anyways, the build is far from complete, but I felt like I'm at a phase now where I've been able to enjoy it these last six months and go on some pretty epic adventures. It is quite capable and is taking me all across BC. So I thought I might as well show you guys what I'm going to call phase one of my Forcer build. And as you guys know, I'm an owner of Flat 4 Off-Road, a local Calgary-based company that helps build forcers like this. So any modifications you see today will be available at Flat 4 Off-Road. So if you're looking to build a forcer like this, or maybe something just to go out on your weekend adventures, reach out to us and we can get you started. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a look at the build. And well, I think the best place to start is the front of the car. So one of the most prominent features is probably this off-road bumper. This is a prototype built a couple years ago for Flat 4 Off-Road. It is something that we have looked at selling maybe well together kits, but it's not something in our near plans. As you can see, it provides some really great arrival angles for when you're going into those ditches compared to where the stock bumper sits out here and it essentially acts as a scoop in the mud. So it has provided a lot of clearance, allowed me to get in around some pretty cool tracks. Another thing is you probably notice it's got a winch. This winch has proved super beneficial in more than one cases. It is actually for UTVs because it is a smaller vehicle. We can get away with putting a little bit of a smaller winch, which saves some money in the budget, but it also has not failed me yet. So I'm gonna continue using this winch. It is actually just a one picked up from Princess Auto here in Calgary, but we can go ahead. You can add a bunch of different options with Warren and stuff. But as I said, this bumper was kind of one of the first things we did with this. So we went ahead with that. Another prominent feature is probably these Hella lights. These are actually Hella 4000s. These are not the LED models. These are the halogen models because I want to stick period specific with this whole car. So we went with halogens, but these do have the markers, which I wired into the rest of the car. So with my markers on the side of the car, these also light up, which is really cool when you have this cover on. These are wired into a relay, which we'll take a look at a little bit later, but it will allow me to upgrade these bulbs into the higher wattage ones when I see fit. Another thing is, well, the antenna. This is a GRMS antenna. It is a tri-band, and this is actually hooked into the radio inside the car. It is more of a mobile unit, but it is hardwired into the car and can be removed when needed. And finally, one other mod we have here that you don't see is I've actually upgraded the bulbs to the Hello Off-Road bulbs in my headlights. As you guys know, LEDs, they're so much brighter now. So I have to compete with them and I've tossed in some high wattage bulbs from Hella. They fit in here, no modifications needed, and they just provide that little extra light output for when you're off the road and on the trails. And one other thing you might notice just hiding under here is a primitive racing skid plate. This is skid plate I just recently put on because I wanted to upgrade for my no name one that I actually bent. This is the thicker 3 16 one because as I said, I completely mangled my old one. So I wanted to go with something a little bit thicker. It mounts in beautifully. It's super easy to take off, put on. And well, the best thing is it protects your car when you bounce off the rocks like I do in so many of our adventures. I also have a primitive racing transmission skid plate. That is because as I said, you will be bouncing off rocks when you're doing stuff like I do. And I just want to make sure I keep the fluids inside the car. That one, a little bit harder to install, but it is worth its weight as I have used that skid plate plenty in our adventures. And while we're up here, let's go ahead and pop the hood and take a look. This is still the stock motor with almost 300,000 kilometers. So it is um, doing well for how much abuse I put it through. But anyways, inside of our engine bay, as I said, we have our relay box. This, I'll show you the controller up at front, but this controls our lights, our Hellas up front, as well as our Hellas on the roof. And then we also have a built-in A or B compressor. This is actually the single compressor model. It does not have the dual compressors, but I don't need a full-size compressor because this will do just fine filling up my tires. On top of that, I have an air regulator that allows me to go ahead, plug it in the tire, fill it up, and it automatically shuts off when it's all full. So that really helps me when I'm getting off the trail and I want to air up, I can go ahead and just pop it on and just let it fill up the tires. And then when it's full, shuts off and I can go move to the next tire. Other than that, you might also notice there's a hose that's running out of here. It goes to the hole in the fender and then it runs up here. It had to be uh, heat treated to kind of make sure it molded on. And then we run it up here, run it on the A-pillar. It is actually epoxied onto the A-pillar. And then we run up to here where we're using a Cyclone Snorkel upgrade head. 
Um, this is because the scoop one doesn't do great in snow, it doesn't do great in rain. So we went ahead and upgraded that with this airhead. Um, this is actually definitely overkill for how much this engine is, but this does allow for greater airflow and well, better, cleaner air. So I don't have to change that air filter in there all the time. And while we're here, we might as well talk about the other thing that makes my Forester stand out. It is what is on the roof. So as you guys notice, this is an A or B roof rack. This is not for a Subaru Forester. This is actually for a Toyota FJ. So this was ex not modified, but we just had to do a little bit of custom fabrication to get it on the car. So what we did is we took off the stock roof rails and we made mounts that mounted right onto the unibody of the car. So as you can see, that is not going anywhere. So that is how we mounted this roof rack. On top of this roof rack, as you can see, we have a rooftop tent. This is a soft shell rooftop tent. I have used it extensively for the last three and a half years. It has done me great. And as you can see, it does fold out this way. And if you go check out some of my other videos, you can see exactly how it sets up. But essentially it does have the little canopy that goes over here. So I do have more room that I can add the annex when I need. Another thing that is on my roof is if we go up here. Up here, we have more Hella lights. These are the Hella 500 Black Magics. We got four of them and they are obviously wired to my relay, but they also have the ABS guards on them. I use these primarily as my ditch lights because they're more of a flood and I use the lights on the front as more of the straight shooters because those are Euro beams. So they do kind of do a flood, but they also do a little bit of a spot. So these all in combination do a great job of lighting up the night. If you guys go watch some of my videos, you will see exactly that. And then one other thing that is on my roof that you can't see on this side, but it's on that side is a Smitty built awning. That is great for when it's hot and sunny and you need a little bit of shade. Again, if you wanna go see that, go check out some of my most recent videos where we open those up in Montana. And now at the back, I think it's a good time to talk about my wheel tire and suspension setup. So if you've been following along, this is one of the biggest upgrades I've done to my car. So these are black Rhino bead locks, gravel bead locks to be specific. These are actually real bead locking rims for Subaru Forcers. These allow me to air down these Toyo Open Country AT3s to four PSI um, in the snow, usually like today when I'm running the trail, it's about 18 to 12 PSI, but in those conditions where I need that traction, I can air them down. And as I said, Toyo Open Country 3s, I run these all year round. In the winter, they do pretty, they do really well. I'm impressed as you guys seen in some of the lake videos. And then in the mud, they keep up with some really demanding conditions. And then kind of hard for you guys to see, but I am running flat out suspension GR light coilovers. Again, this is one of the first upgrades I did to the Forester when I really wanted to push it. These allow for, well, a lot more travel than you would have in a stock Forester, as well as adjustability that I need for, well, running a much heavier roof rack, so more spring rate, and making sure that I can adjust it when I need to. So I have it about an inch and a half to two inch lift. We've never really measured because, well, it's just so different that it's hard to compare. And then one other thing that you cannot see is I'm also running no sway bars. They have been completely cut off the car because I'm running stiffer springs. And honestly, I have not noticed that much of a difference. Obviously you can't go full rally car on it, but as you guys see in some of my videos, I push this car pretty good and it seems to take it really well. So I am not disappointed that I don't have sway bars because the car just seems to take everything I can throw at it. Now moving to the back, we can go ahead and take a look at what we have inside. A couple of things I want to mention before we go ahead and do that. I'm also running a RA Motorsports rear dip skid plate that just protects the skid plate when I'm bouncing over rocks. And then the mud flaps you see are kind of a combination of whatever I can find in some Gorilla mud flaps. They have just been cut and shaved to kind of fit in there. If you guys want to see kind of how we did that, you can go ahead and take a look at the tire install video. But we will first address what is this. This is my camp kitchen. This is pretty cool. This allows me to go ahead, have a stove, as well as have a prep and cutting area. But it doesn't really stop at that. This also allows us to have a sink. You might be wondering what this thing is here. This is my faucet. There's a little ball valve that sits here and it runs to a water bladder that is sitting under my floor in the spare wheel well, and it allows me to pump up to 50 gallons. I've never needed 50 gallons and I probably won't need ever need 50 gallons of potable water 
to a faucet on my car. So it goes into the sink and as you see, it's just a little battery powered faucet and it allows us to clean dishes, fill up our water bottle, either here or here. And when we're done, we can go ahead and we can take the sink out, dump it out and reinstall it. So this is allows us to have essentially a kitchen in our Subaru Forester. And with the kitchen all put away, we can take a look at some other things in this Forester. As you can see, I have an empty space here. This is for the fridge, cooler, or whatever I need when I'm traveling. So that place is pretty flexible because there is a 12 volt there. I can plug in a fridge if needed. It mostly has act as a cooler space for when we are doing our shorter trips. You might also notice we have bungees and tie downs on our container here. This allows us to put obviously dry goods here as well as any other storage containers here. As we move farther back, we have what we have is this ADF mole rack. This allows us to go ahead and mount stuff using these little canvas bags from something else that is in the front. It allows us to store stuff like our hatchet, our fire extinguisher, very important, as well as our air down tools, knives, and on the other side we have paper towel and some tow rope. So it allows us to really use as much storage as possible in this car because there isn't a ton. And speaking of that, we also have this little mesh net here for light stuff like clothing or whatever or towels that allows me to again use as much storage as we can back here because a build like this you're really short on storage and as we move into the interior here there's a couple things that i would like to point out this is our relay box for well our lights we do have additional spots where we can go ahead add more lights which i'm planning to do or add a couple other ideas that i have you might also notice that my gray seats aren't gray. I do have the seat covers on. They're actually Smitty built Molly rack covers. So these allow me to have a Molly rack on the back of my seats. They're meant for Jeeps, but they fit pretty well on a Subaru Forester seat. Well enough that I've used them for about a year now and they're staying on because they allow me to mount so much more. Obviously, well, camera gear mounts on my passenger seat, and then I have a first aid kit and some other stuff on the back of the driver's seat. And then also it allows me to mount stuff up here. So I have my controller for my winch as well as a headlamp. And then on the passenger side, I do have a couple other things. I do have a water bottle mount as well as another headlamp mount. Also using just here, we have our spare radio, which we use when we're out spotting someone as well as the WeatherTech floor mats. These are a game changer. This is the first thing I did on this car to ensure that we could go ahead and survive the winters here in Alberta. And then to wrap everything in the interior, we have obviously a new touchscreen deck because this is great to go ahead and connect my phone and see our maps when we're off-roading right on here. And then below the phone mount, we have our GMS radio. As I said, this runs to the antenna and then we have our mic that is mounted beside the steering wheel so I can go ahead and use the radio. It is just mounted on here with another pro clip mount so that it is just stuck on there so it doesn't move. Theoretically, it could be removed, but really you don't need to remove it when you have another spare just sitting over there. And one other thing that I forgot to mention in the back of the car is this whole car has a black suede headliner that I redid when I mounted the rack, as well as blacked out pillars. The whole goal of this car is eventually to black out the whole interior, and that's kind of the first steps toward it. Anyways, hopefully now you can see exactly how I built my Forster. If I missed anything, or if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. Also, as I mentioned, if you want to build something like this and you're in Calgary and Alberta, reach out to Flat Far Off Road and we can get you set up. But as always, Peace out and stay humble.